Having conquered my first playthrough of the seemingly endless but excellent story, I've had more than enough time to reflect on all I love to do in Red Dead Redemption 2. Some things are blatantly obvious, while others are a tad relative. After all, this is my second run, so opposed to leading the life of an angel among outlaws, my spectrum of honor has radically faded to a shade of gray. It's a vast world out there, and by now I imagine you've discovered a number of things you enjoy doing, so sound off in the comments below. In the meantime, here are 10 things I can't get enough of in Red Dead 2. I get it. It's gruesome, immoral, and evil. evil! But let's not kid ourselves. Most of us do it. Since the dawn of Rockstar open world games, we inevitably feel compelled to face off with all the law can throw at us. Hell, some of us fire off rounds at innocent townsfolk from the start. The point is my hands remain clean for more than 85 hours through my first run, so naturally I had to pick a fight with Valentine Sheriff on playthrough number two. It really provides me an excuse to see how long I can survive without cheat codes. Sure, I feel like a real sick bastard while piling bodies in the general store, but damn if it isn't a good time. While we're on the subject of heinous crimes, robbing the innocent dry is one of several ways to garner loads of cash. That is if you consider roughly two grand or less a hefty sum. Regardless, sticking up store owners, stagecoach drivers, trains, and even bystanders is both fun and technically impressive. As you're aware, NPCs react accordingly to your actions, and their believable emotions make thievery all the more thrilling. Though it lacks the action-packed adrenaline of a train heist, stealthily looting a homestead while the owner snooze is exciting in its own right. On a somewhat lighter note, I've never enjoyed hunting in a game more than the time I've spent doing so in Red Dead 2. With dozens of species to discover and realism at an all-time high, getting the drop on an unsuspecting beast is quite satisfying. I love applying cover scent and sneaking up on a flock of geese or ravenous grizzly. Those cuddly creatures sure have a brutal way of expressing their affection, but I can't get enough of those bear hugs. The graphic act of collecting skins and meat and strapping bloody carcasses onto your steed is rewarding in many ways. From providing provisions for your camp, cashing in perfect pelts for cash, to investing legendary skins into handsome trapper gear, every hunt is worth it. Game's over, mister. Just put your hands up. Take me in. Take me in? What for? Apparently that stuff you're pushing is killing folk. Man, I don't know, it ain't my business. Partner, that's crap. I'm a healer! Speaking of violently killing things, bounty hunting is one of my favorite pastimes. It's a lot of fun in many games, but it's especially badass in a Wild West setting. Thanks to Roger Clark's performance as Arthur Morgan and the exceptional AI intelligence, the act of accepting a bounty, hunting them down, and returning them dead or alive for a reward is better than ever. The characters and stories pertaining to each bounty are varied and have made for some of the most memorable moments I've had with the game. Let's hope there's an infinite number of goons to seek and collect for cash in Red Dead Online. Here's where things get a bit daft. Now you wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. I admit it, this is awful. Just horrible, but hilarious. I both scream horrifically and laugh hysterically when my own Lil Sebastian takes a tumble. I began to enjoy it so much that I started stealing random horses and crashing them into oncoming stagecoaches and leaping them off cliffs. I don't condone unnecessary violence against animals, but this is a video game. And dagnabbit, I'm gonna exploit the hell out of it! I tend to dial back the cruelty and throw myself off of things instead. You see, the glorious Euphoria physics engine shines brighter than ever in Red Dead 2, so I can't help but toss myself off a rooftop from time to time. And on a side note, clunky controls my ass! Get a load of this sh**! If the controls were that clunky, I couldn't parkour across the rooftops of Valentine. I consider Red Dead 2's level of interactivity to be groundbreaking. Greeting or antagonizing any human being is always a pleasure, but I prefer the stimulating conversations I share with all the pups and cats inhabiting the world. Honestly, there should be bounties placed on your head for failing to praise every dog you encounter. 
If a poodle's grouchy owner feels like giving you lip, You're dead. put him down. That way you can pat the pup as long as you please and loot the poor bastard's shiny belt buckle. It's really a win for everyone. What's more is every animal you've met remembers you. I may have spent the last hour slamming my horse into trees, but boy does the joyful bark of a golden retriever warm my cold heart. On the other hand, giving locals a hard time is great. Just shut up, you don't know me. Step right up, man. Shut your damn mouth. Right I was entirely unaware of the amazing insults Arthur bottles up inside. Good heavens above. Look at you. <laughs> Whatever you say, fella. Where did you folks meet? The freak show? I'm ignoring you now. What rock did you crawl out from under? I wouldn't run your math if I was you. I've been slinging degrading one-liners left and right as I stroll through Valentine. There's nothing better than duking it out in the mud with a grizzled rancher after mocking his manhood. Does that sound like a precursor to Brokeback Mountain? Absolutely. But we'll save the spur rattling romance for another time. Sometimes I'll skip the unpleasantries and just sock the bartender in the face. And believe me, I've socked the sheriff, but I wouldn't dare sock the deputy. Nothing darkens the day of a passerby quite like tipping your hat to him one moment than knocking his lights out the next. As ridiculous as it sounds, I find the idea of an angry cowboy punching the crap out of anyone who acknowledges his presence to be so funny. Just don't make the mistake of punching a horse in the face. Whether it's a snake-bitten buffoon who requires a good thigh-sucking or an abducted lady who needs rescuing, I've loved being a hero. I've assisted workers with lifting a fallen tree off of a man's leg and even rushed an injured gentleman to a nearby doctor. If you're well into the game, you've undoubtedly had your fair share of similar experiences. The most impressive aspect of these random encounters is I've only witnessed a couple of them more than once through my first 80 hours. The best part is when people mention your heroic deeds to their friends hours after you've saved them. Thank the Lord you showed up when you did. All the things he said he'd do to me. It's all right, ma'am. It's over now. Thank you. Again. Since I've confessed to committing a multitude of egregious acts, I figure I should end on a positive one. Following a string of successful robberies, a big heist, or profitable exchange with the local fence, I thoroughly enjoy dropping hundreds on new clothes and weapon upgrades. I primarily rocked variations of the default Arthur look during my first playthrough, but I'm leaning toward more of a sinister look this time around. The same can be said for weapon customization. Between the many varnishes, engravings, and carvings, I have a lot of fun tweaking the look of my firearms. And it's all thanks to the 10 minutes I spent looting the 20-odd bounty hunters I gunned down in the Heartlands. Anyway, what are some of your favorite things to do in Red Dead Redemption 2? Please let me know in the comments below, I really want to hear from you guys. And just let me know what you think of the game overall. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to COG Connected for all things gaming. And for news, reviews, features, and more, visit us online at cogconnected.com. The many miles we walk The many things we learn The building of a shrine